Hello, everyone. I'm Jessica, and welcome to Learning English with Jessica. In this video, we're going to listen and practice our English through many different conversations. You can play it again repeatedly while engaging in other activities to help your brain memorize the language. Be patient, and you will swiftly improve your speaking and listening skills. Now, let's jump right into the video. What's your favorite place you've ever visited? Hey, it's great to see you again. What's new? Not much. Just trying to plan my next trip. I can't wait to travel again. Oh, that's great. What's your favorite place you've ever visited? That's a tough question. There are so many amazing places I've been to. I think my favorite would have to be Japan. Really? What did you like about it? There's just something magical about Japan. The culture, the food, the people. That sounds interesting. Yeah, everything is so unique and fascinating. I especially loved visiting Tokyo and Kyoto. I've always wanted to visit Japan. What did you do while you were there? Oh, I did so much. I visited temples. I ate delicious food. I explored different neighborhoods. And I even attended a traditional tea ceremony. It was such an unforgettable experience. Wow, it sounds like you had an incredible time. I'm definitely adding Japan to my travel bucket list. You definitely should. It's a wonderful place to visit. So what about you? What's your favorite place you've ever visited? Hmm, that's a tough one. I think I'd have to say Italy. Why do you say so? The food, the wine, the art, the history. It's all so incredible. I especially loved visiting Rome and Florence. That sounds amazing. I've always wanted to visit Italy, too. Maybe that would be my next destination. That would be great. I highly recommend it. What do you think about planning a trip together sometime? That would be fantastic. Let's definitely make it happen. What is the craziest thing you've done on a vacation? What is the craziest thing you've done on a vacation? Crazy thing? <laughs> I'm not sure. Have you never done anything? Uh, well, once I spent a lot of money to rent a five-star hotel. And you know what I did there? I slept the whole day. You did nothing during the trip. Right. I spent quite a lot of money and got nothing done. That really is a waste of money. That was the craziest thing I've done. How about you? Last month, I decided to go on a trip all by myself. Wow, that's crazy. Everything was pretty fine. I enjoyed my own time and did what I wanted. Don't you feel bored? Not at all. But I probably won't go alone like that anymore. Why? I thought you liked it. I thought so until one night when I was on my way back to my hotel. I got robbed. Oh my god. What happened? It was quite late and I got stopped by three strangers. They wanted all my stuff. Did you give them what they wanted? Well, I was about to do it, but an officer appeared and chased them away. Gosh, that was close. Luckily, he was there. Yeah, that was when I decided that I'll never go on a trip alone anymore. You're right. It's quite dangerous. Did your family book a cruise ship last week? Hi, I'm back. Danny, you look so happy. Of course, I had a great trip with my family this holiday. Ah, 
I saw the pictures that you updated on Instagram. Did your family book a cruise ship last week? Right, uh, this is the first time I've ever tried it. I've never had a trip on a cruise ship. How was it? I must say, it was amazing. Wow, tell me more. The cruise ship is fully equipped like a hotel. I think it's even more convenient. That's right. It's both a means of transportation and a place to live. How was everything? Perfect. Of course, the scenery was too wonderful. I was in love with it. I enjoyed the sunrise and sunset while floating in the sea. Oh, that sounds great. The waiters were also very professional. The food was delicious and the rooms were clean. It seems that a cruise ship is like a five-star hotel. Yeah. Well, after hearing from you, I really want to try it once. You must experience that. You will not be disappointed. But is it expensive? Well, I'm not sure because my parents paid for everything. But if you want, I will ask my mom for you. Should we go there by train, car, or plane? We're going to travel next week, but we haven't made any plans yet. Yes, we should do it now. Should we go there by train, car, or plane? Well, I went there by train once. How was it? It was pretty cheap, but it will take quite a long time. And I don't think we have that much time. Right. I don't think we should go by train. How about driving our own car? Not bad. It's cheap, and I can enjoy the beautiful view on the way. But it still has the disadvantage of taking a long time. And driving a car for a long time is also quite exhausting. So let's go by plane. Yeah, that's probably the best option. It's fast and convenient. We'll have more time to hang out. But the cost will be a little more expensive. It's a well spent, uh, don't worry. Okay, so I will check and book the tickets. Sure, I'll make a list of what we need to prepare. Great. Where should we go first, the beach or the amusement park? Finally, we're here in LA. Our dream has come true now. Let's discover LA. I'm so excited right now. There are a lot of places to visit. Where should we go first? The beach or the amusement park? Which one do you choose? I'm okay with everything. I prefer going to Malibu Beach first. Can't wait to enjoy this beautiful beach. But do you think it will take a long time from here to Malibu? It's 2 p.m. already. Ah, oh, right. We should go in the morning and spend all day at the beach. Yeah, we also want to have a picnic on the beach. We can't do it now. I also want to swim after that. For sure. Going to the amusement park is a better choice. Deal. Is the amusement park near here? Let me check. Ten minutes from here by taxi. Cool. The amusement park has a lot of games to play. Can you play games and ride rides like a roller coaster? Of course. We will play all the games and ride everything there. Then we'll have dinner at the Steam and Burger. Great, let's go. What are your top three favorite foods? Hey, Lisa, I've got a fun question for you. What are your top three favorite foods? Oh, I love talking about food. Let me think. Okay, I'd have to say tacos, sushi, and chocolate cake. 
Great choices, Lisa. Tacos are so versatile. Do you have a favorite type of taco? Definitely. I'm a big fan of shrimp tacos with tangy slaw and a squeeze of lime. They're simply irresistible. Yum. Now on to sushi. What makes it one of your top favorites? Sushi is like art on a plate. I enjoy a good spicy salmon roll or a delicate piece of nigiri with fresh fish. It's a culinary adventure for the taste buds. I couldn't agree more. And your third favorite food, chocolate cake, is a classic. Is there a particular kind of chocolate cake you prefer? Oh, absolutely. I adore a rich, moist chocolate cake. It's pure indulgence. That sounds heavenly. I'm getting hungry just thinking about it. Thanks for sharing, Lisa. It's always fascinating to hear people's favorite foods. Food is such a delightful topic to talk about. Now I'm curious, what are your top three favorite foods? Hmm, it's tough to choose. But I'd say pizza, grilled salmon, and cheesecake. Each one holds a special place in my heart. That sounds like a fantastic combination. I'm always up for a good slice of pizza and a delicious dessert. What's the weirdest food you've ever eaten? Hey, Sarah, I have a question for you. What's the weirdest food you've ever eaten? Oh, that's an interesting question, David. Let me think. Well, the weirdest food I've tried was probably fried crickets. Fried crickets, that sounds adventurous. How did they taste? Surprisingly, they had a crunchy texture and a nutty flavor. Once you get past the idea of eating insects, they're not too bad. That's fascinating. I don't know if I'd be brave enough to try that. What made you decide to give it a go? I was traveling in Thailand and wanted to embrace the local culture. Insects are considered a delicacy there, so I thought I'd give it a shot. Wow, that's truly immersing yourself in the experience. I admire your adventurous spirit. Thank you, David. It was definitely a memorable culinary adventure. So now I'm curious, what's the weirdest food you've ever tried? Well, it's not as extreme as fried crickets, but I once had fermented tofu. It had a strong, pungent aroma and a quiet taste. It's a popular dish in some Asian countries. Fermented tofu sounds interesting. I can imagine it being an acquired taste. It's fascinating how different cultures have unique foods. Absolutely, David. Exploring different cuisines allows us to expand our culinary horizons and appreciate diverse flavors. I couldn't agree more. It's always exciting to try new things and step outside our comfort zones. Definitely. It opens our minds and provides us with interesting stories to share. Well, thanks for sharing your experience, Sarah. You're welcome, David. It's been fun talking about unique culinary experiences. That's fun. Coffee or tea? Hey, Anna, do you have time? Sure, I just finished my lesson. Me too. That's great. Let's go out. Okay. Coffee or tea? You know, I don't like either of them. Well, I forgot you don't drink coffee or tea. You like smoothies, right? Exactly. Smoothies or juice. I can't drink coffee. Why? I find it quite good. A lot of people like it. Coffee makes me more sleepy. Really? How can it be? It's the drink that can wake us up. I usually drink a cup of coffee in the morning to be awake during the day. It's totally opposite to me. I've tried many times before. Nothing changes. That's so strange. Right. How about tea? You also can't drink tea, can you? I can't sleep after I drink tea. There was a time I couldn't sleep the whole night just because I drank a sip of tea with my friend. After that, I've never tried tea again. God, you're totally different from me. 
Yeah, a little bit. I will be loyal to smoothies and juice. It's okay. Drinking a lot of juice helps to beautify the skin. What are your top three drinks? Come in, please. Your house is so big. Don't say that. It's still messy. Do you want a drink? That would be great. What do you like to drink? Anything. You decide. Do you want a cup of orange juice? Sounds good. Thanks. Wait a minute. I'll be right back. You made this really good. Thank you. That's my secret recipe. <laughs> yeah, I know you have a passion for beverages. I really enjoy making good drinks. What are your top three drinks? For me, the best one is coffee. Well, you drink a lot of coffee. You really love it, right? Yeah, I usually drink coffee while working to keep me awake. And the next one is smoothies. Oh, you can make smoothies, can't you? Of course. How can you do that? It's so hard to do. No way. It's not as difficult as you think. I saw my mom did that before. She had to prepare so many things. Maybe. How about the last one? Don't tell me it's water. No. I like water, but cocktails are my third favorite kind of drink. I like those too. We could go together sometimes. That's great. A cocktail and some music. Perfect. What is your favorite dish to prepare? Hi, Emily. Oh, hi, Mark. I didn't think I would meet you here. I thought you were not into reading. That's right, but I'm here today for some cookbooks. Oh, you like cooking? That surprises me. Yeah, it's my new hobby. I'm curious, what is your favorite dish to prepare? I must say, my favorite dish to prepare is a classic beef stir fry. Beef stir fry? That sounds delicious. What do you enjoy about making it? Well, I love the combination of flavors and textures. It's a versatile dish where I can experiment with different vegetables, sauces, and seasonings. That sounds exciting. Is there a particular technique or tip that you can share? Absolutely. The key to a perfect beef stir fry is slicing the beef thinly and marinating it to enhance its tenderness and flavor. And it's essential to cook it quickly over high heat to retain its juiciness. That sounds professional. Do you have any favorite vegetables or sauces that you like to use? I'm a fan of colorful bell peppers, crunchy broccoli, and tender snow peas. As for sauces, I enjoy a combination of soy sauce, garlic, and ginger for a savory and aromatic taste. Yum, I can almost taste it. Is there a side dish you like to serve with your beef stir fry? I usually serve it with steamed jasmine rice or noodles to complement the flavors. It creates a satisfying and well-balanced meal. It sounds like a fantastic dish. You make me really want to try it. Come over to my house and I'll cook it for you. I need someone to judge it as well. It would be my pleasure. What would your dream house be like? Hey Jack, if you could have your dream house, what would it be like? Oh, that's an exciting question, Emily. Let me picture it. Well, my dream house would be a cozy cottage nestled in the countryside. That sounds lovely, Jack. What features would your dream cottage have? I imagine it with a charming stone exterior, a thatched roof, and a beautiful garden surrounding it. That sounds picturesque. How about the interior? What would it be like? 
Inside, I love to have a small living room with a fireplace perfect for cozy evenings. The kitchen would be bright and open with a large farmhouse style dining table. That sounds inviting. And what about the bedrooms? I'd have a master bedroom with a big window overlooking the serene countryside and a guest room for friends and family to stay comfortably. It sounds like a peaceful retreat. Any other special features you'd like to include? Absolutely. I'd have a library filled with books and I can work in there. It sounds like a dream come true. I can imagine the tranquility and joy it would bring. Indeed, Emily. Having a home that reflects my personality and provides a sanctuary is something I've always dreamed of. I can understand that. Well, I hope one day your dream house becomes a reality, Jack. Thank you, Emily. Who knows? Dreams have a way of coming true. And what about you? What would your dream house be like? If you could change one thing about yourself, what would you choose? How was your interview? I'm not sure. She asked me a lot of questions. Were they difficult? Could you answer them? I answered all of her questions, but I don't know whether my answer satisfied her or not. Which one impressed you the most? If you could change one thing about yourself, what would you choose? Wow, how did you answer it? If I could change one thing about myself, I'd change my stubbornness. Why? Sometimes I am too stubborn. I do not change my decisions and I always consider myself to be right. And sometimes I turn out to be wrong, leading to unfortunate results. I get it. But do you think being stubborn is a good thing sometimes? She also asked me this question. I said, then it would be consistency. I want to balance it myself and I need time. I think your answer is impressive. I hope the interviewer feels the same way. And how about you? If you received this question, how would you answer it? I would change nothing. Who I am today comes from every single thing in the past, and I don't want to change anything. That would be a very good answer. Thank you. What's the best piece of advice you've ever been given? Have you ever needed advice from anyone? Of course, life is not easy. Sometimes a piece of advice can change everything. What's the best piece of advice you've ever been given? I think it's the advice from my dad. When did you receive it? When I needed to choose my major at university. I had to decide between IT and economics. So what did your dad say? He said that each subject has its own features and career prospects. But with the current trend, technology is the dominant industry in all fields and the human resources needed is huge. So it seemed like he wanted you to choose IT. That's why I'm studying at this university. Do you think his advice was useful? Sure. A lot of job opportunities are provided during the learning process. I'm now working part-time for an IT company and the salary is quite good. Well, he is right. Yeah. He also gives me the best direction and pieces of advice. You're so lucky. Well, advice is just advice. You are the one who decides it, so believe in yourself first. I know that. I rarely find any pieces of advice from anyone. What's the best thing that ever happened to you? Hey, Michael, I've got a question for you. Okay, ask me. What's the best thing that ever happened to you? Oh, that's a tough question, Sarah. Let me reflect for a moment. The best thing that ever happened to me was meeting my soulmate. 
That's beautiful, Michael. Can you tell me more about it? Certainly. I was at a cafe one day, feeling a bit lost and uncertain about life. That's when I saw her sitting at a corner table, reading a book. Our eyes met, and it was an instant connection. That sounds like a magical encounter, Michael. What has made it the best thing in your life? Well, she brought so much love, joy, and understanding into my life. We've been through thick and thin together, supporting each other through every challenge. She is my rock and my source of endless happiness. That's truly heartwarming, Michael. Finding a soulmate is a rare and precious gift. Absolutely, Sarah. The love and companionship we share is something I treasure every single day. I'm so happy for you, Michael. It's incredible how one person can make such a profound impact. Thank you, Sarah. I feel incredibly fortunate and grateful for the best thing that ever happened to me. Do you have a collection of anything? Wow, is this your book collection? Yeah, I've been collecting since I was five years old. Five years old? So young! Yeah, ever since I learned to read, I've had an interest in books, especially classic books. Yeah, I see a lot of famous books on the shelf. Right, it took me a long time to find them. What a massive collection! Do you have a collection of anything? Of course, collecting is also one of my hobbies. What do you collect? I collect CDs. Wow, that's great. It's been such a long time since I've last seen a CD. Yeah, people don't use CDs much anymore. People often listen to music and watch live videos on the internet. That's right, so I've had a hard time finding old CDs and they sell them at very high prices. So have you collected much yet? My collection is small because I don't have enough financial resources to buy many. But I will try to have a huge collection like you. You can do it. There are some collecting clubs. You can join them to support others and share or trade. Oh, that's great. I will join them later. That's the end of the video. Thank you for watching. Remember to practice English every day to improve your skills. Watch the video at least three times a week and repeat daily conversations to improve your listening and speaking skills fast. Try to mimic the intonation and pronunciation in the video to enhance your speaking fluency and pronunciation. Don't forget to like, share, and comment on my video. Please subscribe to the Learn English with Jessica channel to watch more helpful videos.